for a change? I am talking, talking, talking to you. Then get ready to explore the quantum possibilities. It's time to transform that outdated paradigm into something universal and new. Time to uncover the truth hidden beneath the veil of lies. A time to think outside the box as we link to a higher consciousness. Welcome to the Awakening. 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 And now the hosts of Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. Nori Love and Augie Nost. Mm, hello, beautiful, radiant light beams. We're so much more. You know, we're so much more than just these bodies. And could you imagine, I mean, could you just imagine if we were each our own individual balls of light right now and that our light intensified so much that the, it was inevitable that rays of light had to just shoot out from the center of the star that we are. And just imagine those golden rays of light reaching out and touching each other's rays of light to make a beautiful golden non-physical net of love around the world, around the universe. We are so much more than just these bodies. And I'm just so excited for our returning guest tonight. And um, I'm a little bit under the weather, so I'm not going to be talking that much at this moment. I'm going to turn it right over to Augie. But I see your light shining. I see you. So, Augie, tell mm -hmm. us about our beloved guest. Oh, I will, I will, I will. Mm -hmm. We have Dan Brock returning to the show. Now, um, Dan has become a good friend. He lives here in Tucson, not too awful far from me, and we have some very similar interests. And uh, we do some of the same activities in town. And I tell you, you're going to have to sit down, put your feet up, and really enjoy this one because it's going to bring you to a place where you may never have been before. See, Dan's diverse experience with the multidimensional energetic aspect of reality began early for him. He was motivated by his encounters with UFOs, alien abductions, crop circles, and other paranormal activity. He often finds himself spiritually venturing beyond the edge of reality into the non-physical. In these alternate realities, he communicates and interacts with the human souls thought forms, and other entities that may venture out there in the multidimensional realities. He has a complicated education, and uh, that one, as one as a mechanical engineer and a nuclear engineer with the U.S. Department of Defense and an environmental engineer for the state of Louisiana. Three different types of genre. That is... That's unique. And for 25 years, he's been uh, involved in filmmaking for Hollywood. In fact, he has his name in the credits for the blockbuster movie Avatar. Now, that is a wow for me. I love that movie. And uh, he's now in Tucson teaching students filmmaking at the University of Arizona School of Theater, Film, and TV. And uh, here's a good one for you. His motto is challenge all BS. Mm -hmm. Now that means challenge all belief systems. You didn't expect that one, did you? <laughs> he has become also a spiritual advocate. And you can find him at dlbrock.com. Dot com and his email is dan at dlbrock.com because after the show you just might want to get in touch with him and uh, mm. for some of you out there that yeah. want to get a little better acquainted with things grab a piece of paper and a pen because they just be mentioned some of the things here that maybe you want to write down so dan welcome back to the show well, Welcome thank you down. both. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I am so happy to be here and I'm honored to be invited on this program. So uh, I am ready to begin our discussion anytime you guys are. 
Oh, we'll be all ears. And uh, just like Nori, I think I'm going to be a little quiet too because I learned over the years that when you are in the presence of excellence, keep your mouth <laughs> shut and listen. <laughs> I am honored by that. I, I, <laughs> it's such an honor. So, Dad, yeah. you know, um, the, the words non-physical um, are so much more accepted and popular now. You know, back in the Back in the late 80s, Abraham Hicks, you know, brought forth, like everybody thought Abraham Hicks was a guy. Um, you know, Abraham Hicks is a collective group of non-physical entities that bring forth the information. And you know, the, the foundation of their whole um, teachings is that there's a, there's, a, there's a bigger part of us. There is the non-physical part of us right, that came here to take on this body, but it's actually the bigger part of us. And it's actually the part of us where we really, really can make things happen and have the lives and the health and, you know, the magic that we really want in this life. And, you know, a lot of people are, are hearing from non-physical, right? Like there's a, there's a plethora of channels and people who are receiving information from the other side and, so what's, what's your take on this, that, you know, that these adventures are becoming so much more accepted and developed and, you know, and how can we continue to develop it? Well, it's been my experience that yeah. uh, the expansion of our awareness is just unstoppable and it's the direction that we're going we're, we're actually i feel in a natural flow right now of the transformation of every human on this planet uh to embrace the reality of who and what we really are which is uh, a spiritual being a being of infinite uh, existence infinite awareness and the more capable we become as physical beings of accessing that, the more we connect with the rest of the universe and with each other. So um, this is a wonderful, wonderful time, and it's just becoming easier because more and more people are doing it. There's more information out there in the non-physical about it. There's more information in the physical. Uh, we can go on the web. We can learn about, you know, so many people having the kind of excursions and experiences like I have. Um, it is becoming far more commonplace, and I am, am uh, deeply uh, excited about this because I don't have to hide about my conversations anymore, which is really good. <laughs> Yeah, you can almost talk to anybody these days and they will not run away or uh, cross themselves against you. Yeah, it's amazing how the uh, the younger people are, the more they just accept this stuff uh, out of hand without yeah. much question. Uh, there's some people that don't, obviously, and that's that's going to be the case. It's the nature of you know, being in our 3D physical reality, um, that there is a range of experiences that we're all going to have here. But there's more people now that are open to this kind of um, capability than ever before. So what I'm going to do tonight is talk a little bit about uh, just a few, not all, uh, some of the principles and techniques that I apply in uh, transversing and transitioning into the non-physical and doing some of the interaction uh, work that I do there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that so it's a good time i think for some people to maybe listen to the techniques that i've uh, discovered over the years and and some of the um sort of principles that i operate by uh and they may find something in this hopefully that will be for their own experience in the non-physical i do want to say that uh you know this varies considerably from person to person and i i give you the disclaimer that you know everything i'm presenting is for <laughs> Uh, your edification only, uh, whatever experiences you have, uh, those are um, strictly up to you to explore. So we, we all have to act responsibly, including in the physical, and uh, that is very, very important. Yeah, and uh, we'll be all ears. And uh, what you probably will be talking about also is uh, is maybe in one of the de definitions might be astral travel but there is also soul travel and there is other th terms that is used out there so maybe also give us your ex you know your impression or maybe the difference and from there on where would we go because i know there are some people that say you know you don't want to do any astral travel but soul travel is okay so 
they're talking in those terms. This is really a challenge that we face because we're trying to describe something in the physical, in our physical, intellectual uh, consciousness, things in the non-physical. And there is uh, so many different people that have gone in and explored, and many of them have developed their own language and their Mm -hmm. own use of conventional terms to describe what they experience. And uh, from my awareness, Part of the confusion comes from, you know, just the difficulty in nailing down exactly what you're experiencing on the other side. Yeah. Uh, and that then translates into confusion over the terminology. The the, the important thing, I think, to remember here is that, um, uh, y- you know, the experience that you have is shaped by your own awareness and your own uh, desires uh, and your own imagination. So it is possible for you to experience anything that uh, is conceivable to you in, in, in many ways, and especially in terms of what other people have described. So you may adopt a description of something in the non-physical, such as the astral plane. What is the astral plane? How someone has defined it to you and how you think of it then plays out in how things appear to you in the non-physical. The the one thing that I've learned is the structure of the non-physical is formless. And it's mm-hmm. mostly you who determines the form and appearance of things that you see. Um, this then, of course, translates into language, what language you use to describe things. There are people that see non-physical beings, they see angels, archangels, they see uh, non-humans, artificial intelligence, they see aliens, they see any number of different things. What you bring with you to the non-physical experience also impacts what you see and what you interact with. And what I mean by bringing with you is not only in the non-physical, but anything physical, your consciousness, your awareness, your sort of expectations at some level uh, that you are are expecting to see or think you will see something. Um, That will sometimes determine the shape and form of what you see and the nature of the first thing or the things that you interact with. Um, So I want to talk just briefly about uh, some of the different... um, aspects of this process. I'm going to try to break it down into parts here so we can go through and have a little bit of discussion about this. And either of you, please jump in here and um, let's open up this discussion as much as possible. Um, And it's not going to be complete, but I'm going to give you a a little smattering of a couple of different areas to think about here as you begin to develop an understanding of interacting and non-physical. Yeah. Yeah. So, my, the first thing I would say is I generally find for myself that it's a good idea to have a mission in mind, something that you want to accomplish by going into the non-physical. Because to me, it's, it's working in, in less of a meditative state and more of a working meditative state. So, you're actually accomplishing something. Um, you know, it's like if you have the Ferrari sitting in the driveway idle all the time, it's not going anywhere. Well, I want to get in the car and go for a drive. So, uh, you know, having an idea of something that you want to accomplish uh, for myself has been very important with my um, focused intent in, in doing the things that I do in the non-physical. So the first thing to talk about, I think, is developing a sort of moral ethical program, a a set of principles uh, for your interactions. You know, how should you behave out there in the non-physical? Um, in the non-physical, you really are representing the entirety of humanity. So you you really have to keep that in mind uh, that you are in many ways a a um, uh, a liaison to the non-physical in the work that you, you do out there and the interactions that you have. Uh, and this can have long-reaching impacts for yourself and, and for humanity and for others um, in ways that we don't necessarily always understand. So generally speaking, when, when I have interactions, I like to you know treat others that I encounter, entities, beings, or whatever, in the ways that I want to be treated. Um, that is just a sort of a general statement. You know, it's important to ask questions, uh, to listen to the information that you're being told and respect it. Uh, when you're in a situation that involves the soul essence of others and you, you come across a situation where you're having some kind of interaction, you, you need to ask permission before you have any kind of interaction or before you begin acting in any way uh, with those uh, uh, beings in the non-physical 
Um, I, I generally work with the idea of building a, a radiance for myself. I'm sort of radiating the power of love and, and having as part of my signature the serenity of the highest um, being or self that I can be in the non-physical. Um, and in that way, I'm I'm sort of putting myself in a position where I'm attracting similar energy. I'm attracting uh, to me the things that reflect what I'm putting out. So I think for myself, that seems to be very important. Um, the the thing about you know people who have interactions with non physical uh, folks come across non beneficial energy. And I think that perhaps the simplest way to think about dealing with non-beneficial energy is that at a, at a lower level, if you, if you have to work with non-beneficial energy some, in some way, returning it back to source where it can be transformed and recycled is a, a potential solution. What um, would that look like? What would a non-beneficial energy look like? You mean like contrast or resistance or… It, it could be, you know, if there's something, you know, some people use what's called the violent flame. They, mm-hmm. they, they interact or they come across something that is non-physical that, that they know and they feel and they, they, uh, it, it permeates them that is not, not beneficial for them. Um, and they simply send it to the, to the violet flame. One of the things that, that I do is I use uh, a source as the sort of black hole that's at the center of our galaxy, at the center of the Milky Way. And I, I send that energy that whatever it is that I'm experiencing so that it can be transformed and transmuted back to source uh, mm-hmm. at that uh, center of the galaxy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's a, a general principle uh, that I that I employ, and I try to only do that when I find it absolutely you know necessary. Um, yeah. It's generally for me been the case that part of my you know moral ethical programming is to transmute and, and transform whatever I come across because there's information that seems missing when you reach something that's non beneficial, and. Um, uh, Acting in a loving, uh, respectful way is, is the way to transmute that, the way, the way to change that. Mm-hmm. So um, from here, so we talk a little bit about the programming of, of how the things that you want to think about when you're doing you know, uh, excursions in the non-physical. Uh, the other question that comes up is, you know, what can you create? What can, what can aid you or assist you on your mission in the non-physical? And, and this is where you... you literally run up against the limitations of your imagination, which hopefully is almost infinite. Uh, it's, it's important to think out of the box. You can have something as conventional that you create, that you could use as a workbench of tools, a chemistry, a medical kit, um, a computer workshop, um, any number of things that you could Uh, could imagine in a conventional sense, but you can also be non-conventional, you know, simply radiating energy of love and, and healing in some instances, uh, if, if that's perhaps your objective. Um, and you know, that is, that is a, uh, a thing that some people use the non-physical for, and it is very different than how you might approach things physically. Um, and that does vary from person to person, how they, how they do that but working unconventionally you know sending the energy into a space into the non-physical to have the sort of result that you intend with that energy so you're wrapping an intention with the energy that you you send out now in this mission um you also have the idea of asking the universe for assistance to provide you with what you need um, and this could be to your guides, to angels, or to other beneficial beings that are there to help you on your, your journey to do whatever work it is that you want to accomplish in the non-physical. Um, one of the other things that I do uh, is I will sometimes find the need to create something like a, a, a shield or an impenetrable bubble or something of that nature that basically... Permit, uh, prevents any kind of infusion or interaction that I don't have any um, control over or is perhaps non-beneficial. Yeah, so I was just th- going to ask that. 
Yeah, that's something that you can do. And, and it's important to have in your conviction when you're working in a non-physical that it is impenetrable, that there is nothing that can get through it that you don't allow to get through it. Um, and, and part of your conviction in what you create in through your imagination in the non-physical is what makes it work, what makes it um, you know, operate. Uh, it's important to, uh, to think about things symbolically when you're creating them. Sometimes symbolically creating something uh, and then using the energy of that object to affect a change, such as flowers. You know, flowers are an important symbol in our society for so many things. Uh, people can use uh, the energy of, of almost any object or anything that they could imagine symbolically to represent uh, energy of change for them. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, when you're working in the non-physical, what I typically do is I, I operate with the idea of being in some analogous form that's analogous to me in the physical. Now, you have the option of making yourself into almost any shape in any form that you, you choose. Uh, you can make yourself invisible. You can make yourself uh uh, stealthy. You can make yourself brilliant. You can do any number of different things. There's consequences to all of that, but it, the, the, there is an enormous range of, uh, of possibilities um, for that. Do you guys have any questions about any of this stuff so far? Well, I love what you're saying, and you know, no matter what level of understanding, whether you're brand new or whether you're super experienced at this, if people... If we can just understand, like I started the show out, there's so much more to us that when you learn to put your self-cloaking device on or when you learn to shine brighter, when you learn to um, expand your energy so that you're the brightest energy in the room, that has really beneficial uh, repercussions in life <laughs> and our experiences. Absolutely, that is very true. Um, you know, taking on that capability and understanding that is possible in the non-physical is really important. Sometimes we we don't think about what's possible until we actually uh, do it. You know, I, I know the the meditations that you've done, uh, Nori, are really incredible in terms of the the. The beauty and the the uh, beauty and the process of the visualizations, and really, in many ways, some of this works as a visualization um, mm -hmm. process that you go through. It can be internalized and be part of your own uh, experience going into the non-physical. But really, you're kind of working with a a visualization process. And now we are getting down to about about thirty seconds left of the before the break here. So hang on to that thought. And okay. we will be back right after the break again with the broadcast team Alpha and talking with Dan Brock. This is the broadcast team Alpha show hosted by Nori Love and Augie Nost. The one show that takes your doubts of the unknown and spins them into reality. Share your thoughts by calling our hotline number at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Call now. Worldwide callers use Skype name KCOR Radio. More cutting-edge conversation and exploration of the quantum universe after this. Hello, KCOR listeners. Lorian Fenton here from The Fenton Files to tell you about UFOCon 2020 in San Francisco, February 20th through 23rd. A conference like no other, UFOCon is where experiencers are going to reveal new information and science and consciousness will collide. So get your tickets at UFOCon2020.com. That's UFOCon2020.com. Don't miss what will be the most talked about conference of the decade. Immerse yourself 
in an epic journey through time where ancient mysteries unfold within a story of love and betrayal, as well as a battle of good versus evil in the Emissary Book One, the reader's favorite gold medal award winner for Visionary Fiction 2019. The action and adventure of the Emissary continues in the Emerald Tablet Book Two. The 2019's bronze medal award winner, The Emissary and the Emerald Tablet by Tamara Veach and Rennie DeFazio are both available now on Amazon.com. Let your reading adventure begin. Great. It's great. I think it's it's great. great. The all-new KCOR Digital Radio Network. Make a note of it. It's great! If ever a breed was affectionate to a fault, it's the Golden Retriever. They're people dogs, pure and simple. And the Golden Retriever Rescue of Southern Nevada needs your help. If you would like to volunteer, foster, adopt, or donate, go to the Golden Retriever Rescue of Southern Nevada's website at grrsn. Dot org. That's G-R-R-S-N dot org. Or call 598-GOLD. That's 598-G-O-L-D. Looking for a radio show like no other? We need something uh, brand new. Then tune into the KCOR Digital Radio Network, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and get ready for... The Quantum Shift. A great shift of consciousness is sweeping across the Earth. Are you ready for the dimensional shift? It is amazing, is it not? The Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Hosted by Dr. Sam Muggsy and Kent Dunn. Be part of the fifth dimensional reality where consciousness prevails and the universal law of one is the only true reality. The Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Live Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Going live. Come explore the quantum possibilities. This is Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. To be on the show live, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide callers use Skype name KCOR Radio. Share your thoughts of the show on Twitter at KCOR Radio, hashtag KCOR. Or join the Cutting Edge Conversation live in our chat room at kcorradio.com. Now, back to Broadcast Team Alpha with your free-thinking hosts, Nori Love and Aginas. Hello, hello. We are back with Broadcast Team Alpha, and we're talking with Dan Brock. And we're talking about what most people would call astral travel. And it's getting deep because the, we are talking about what's going on outside of the physical and maybe also outside of time as we know it. So, Dan, did you keep your thought on what you were talking about? Yes, I did. And I've got my notes here and I want to be sure that we uh, take, take some time with this next section, which is talking about tuning yourself up for going into the non-physical, getting your body and mind ready for that excursion. You know, the, the concern for a lot of people is, you know, what is the startup conditions? How do, I, how do I get myself into the mode of working or going into and working in the non-physical? Um, there's some general things that I use that I have found that help me in that process. Um, I have sort of reached a point where, it, you know, I may find myself in the non-physical at any given moment. I've, I've been in a coffee shop before and suddenly had a non-physical interaction. So anything becomes possible at some point. But it's, it's really wonderful when you can, you know, set the conditions where you feel safe and you feel comfortable in an environment where you're going to do this, this kind of work. Uh, the first thing I do is I, I 
try to define a quiet, warm place of comfort and safety that I can be. Sometimes that's late at night. I may wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning or 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning. And sometimes I choose to do the work during that time. Um, and generally what I do is uh, find I'd like to do my work at night when there's far fewer visual distractions. Uh, there's less noise, less movement, lights, that kind of thing. Sometimes when you're in a space with someone else or even an animal, that can be a distraction. Uh, so having your pets next to you sometimes can be a distraction. also depends sometimes on how they um, react to the work that you do. Sometimes some animals are very, very sensitive to the work that you do in the non-physical and non-physical interactions. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, when you find yourself in a good place where you're ready to um, you know, look at uh, what's possible in the non-physical, the first thing I, I generally do is I use some breath exercises to relax my body and I begin to clear my mind, clear my mind of conscious thoughts. Um, usually a minimum of three very deep breaths is, uh, is really important. Um, and then what I do, this is a, a really specific technique that I use which, uh, and I've done other things, but this, this seems to work, is I make a tri triangle with my two hands, with my fingers, my index fingers and my thumbs, I make a triangle and I blow into that triangle three times. Three breaths, three, three processes of blowing uh, through the triangle. I hold it out in front of my mouth and I blow through it. And I imagine that I have in visualize, I use the word imagine and visualize is kind of uh, interchangeable, but I visualize that I'm creating a ring, almost like a, if you want to think of a smoke ring. Uh, and I'm creating three smoke rings that are all concentric. They're all one right behind the other. And then I create that in front of me and I allow it to exist in front of me. And then what I do is I imagine and visualize myself rising through those rings and going through progressive layers of separation from the physical and into the non-physical and eventually I'm emerging out on the other side of the third ring into the non-physical. Now, what is that? Well, that could be any number of things. You could simply uh, have a desire to emerge out into space uh, in a non-physical form. So you're in a non-physical form emerging into space and you look around and you're able to see the stars around you, the planets, and you're able to move in any way that you want at that point. Um, you can move almost instantaneously. You can do it without sensation or you can do it with sensation. Um, one of the things that's very interesting is I've noticed that when I um, go out into that non-physical space, sometimes I'm going into a space that I've created myself, uh, which might be you know, something like a valley, uh, a green valley, and I'm um, on a cliff and I jump down to the green valley. When I do that, um, what I will feel is a tingle down my spine. I'll feel almost the sensation of movement as I am moving downward. Uh, this is a really good indicator. So it's one of the feedbacks that you can get because you're still conscious. You're sort of splitting yourself between physical and non-physical, waking consciousness or ordinary consciousness and the non-physical. You're still aware of things in the room, uh, but you're having this sort of visualization experience of things out in in the ethers out in the other dimensions. And when you have a, um, a movement that you visualize uh, in those other spaces, uh, when that translates into your body, that tells you, it gives you a little hint that your body is now sort of tuned into the non-physical. And there's a, there's a part of your uh, physical consciousness that is connected to that. And, and it actually, to me, always indicates, well, I've really gotten into the right place now because I'm feeling this in the physical body, some of the things that I'm doing in the non-physical. And I just find that to be really uh, an important indicator mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, so now the, the question is, is what are you going to encounter in the non-physical? Well, you can encounter almost anything. Uh, there are various entities, beings, people, projections, machines, other life forms, uh, any number of different types of uh, beings or entities that you can interact with in the non-physical. 
uh, you can be places. You could be on this world. You can be somewhere um, in, in almost like an astral projection. You could be somewhere on this planet that you know or you recognize. You could be on other worlds. You could be in other places that are indescribable, perhaps, to you in in a way that uh, you're. It's beyond your your ordinary imagination, and in in many ways that is an indication that you have been successful in transferring your consciousness out into that non-physical state. Uh, when you begin having interactions where you're not really projecting anything, it's simply occurring in front of you, and you're getting that information. So there's this sort of point of transition where you 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 generate, you're imagining or visualizing space, but then it transitions into something more than that where you're having an interaction and information is coming to you. Uh, for me, that's always a really, a really good sign. Uh, the other thing is uh, people talk about going into different dimensions. I'm in the dimensions. Well, that's a very generic term. And you can have different interactions at different levels in different dimensions, it seems. Um, what I have done in the past is I've worked with the idea of there being some sort of, to me, a physical barrier. So there's almost a sensation I feel as I go through the different dimensions, mm -hmm. as I rise from the, you know, from the ordinary three-dimensional reality to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dimensions or even higher. Mm -hmm. Um, each one of those represents a level that I go through and I get a, a sensation almost like I'm passing through a, a bubble or an envelope uh, my body is as I'm going to that next level. And I, I will tell you that it seems that as we trans transfer our consciousness out into the non-physical, we began to get uh, a little bit of a differentiation, a different perspective on things that are going on. The higher the dimensions are, the broader the perspective, the less meaning time has. So all of these are an enormous number of variables. You know, the, the number of variables possible here is just uh, almost infinite. And as such, it becomes difficult sometimes to describe, and it really becomes an individual's experience um, to have in going into those spaces. So one of the one of the next things to talk about is you know how do you react? What's what's your emotional reaction? Your physical reaction when you're in the other dimensions? Um, some, hey some yes, go ahead. Yeah, let me mention something right here because and there are people out there that might be wondering you know what could I really do? And one of the things that I would say is do what interests you and what you are passionate about let's say that you want to see what's on the moon then do that let's say that you want to go and visit somebody on an extraterrestrial spacecraft then do that visualize a craft and approach it and go in there but be also aware that they may see you because they may be operating on that level where you are so if they don't want you there they will tell you to leave and uh, if they uh, want you then you can get the tour of the place so there is a lot of neat things that can be done for people that want to learn this and that was my only comment this is very very true very important to consider uh, when you're when you're venturing out in the non-physical the the responsibility that you have to ask you know, permission, if yeah. you're going to be in a space is, is very important, uh, at least from my experience it is, uh, because you, you do want to represent yourself positively in, in the spaces in, in a beneficial kind of way. Um, the range of entities and beings and places that you can interact with is is, uh, is quite infinite, and, and one of the things that can happen is they can be rather surprised when you're there. It's a little bit yeah. of an unusual experience for them. They can be highly curious. They can be curious um, in ways that you really don't understand. And you may find yourself in an interaction that is like, well, I didn't really know it was going to go that way. Well, uh, they may operate sometimes under different principles. So it's, it's hard to, it's essential to establish boundaries for yourself when you're interacting you know how you are going to behave and what you're going to do when you when you interact in the non-physical. Mm -hmm. um, the 
the, the important thing to to think about, you know, just generally speaking in the non-physical is, um, you know, as your role is really central, it's important to take the action that is based in accordance with what you see, which is, you know, the most appropriate thing that you can do, because it's going to be, it's going to appear to you and be to you in a form that you're going to be able to understand and uh, come up with a, a an, uh, an analysis, a uh, decision about how to proceed based on what is shown to you, uh, and and also based on your 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 feelings, what what comes to your body. If you begin to get goosebumps and chills, well, maybe that's not the place for you to be, and you should remove yourself, um, perhaps yeah. from that location. That's possible. Um, th- there's a range of possibilities. The important thing is is um, you know, you're using your imagination as a guide, but there's this concept of the guides or angels. There's entities out there that are willing to help you um, with your adventure and, and your uh, growth into the non-physical. Uh, they have a lot of information to share with you, and and they can be very, very supportive. So one of the things you can do is you can request that assistance, and you probably should request that assistance. Yeah. Uh, it's very important. Um, so what can you do in the non-physical? Well, you know, you're, you can do a number of different things. You know, I use it a lot for getting information about people. I had, uh, someone that I worked with recently who had some interactions with, uh, as a result, uh, some strange things started happening to them after an interaction with ayahuasca. And what I discovered in working with them in the non-physical is the ayahuasca was still somehow connected to them and was still in the process of working with them. And it was working with them through affecting things in their life. Um, This was information that I uh, have shared with the individual for them to be able to make better decisions about, you know, what is going on. Uh, the, The challenge might be the interpretation. You know, am I possessed? What's going on? Well... Uh, no, actually, you're not possessed, but you have a responsibility to do the right thing, to to uh, grow yourself spiritually through these experiences, and do the transformative work that um, the you know the universe is trying to get you to do. Whether it's through ayahuasca or, or whatever it is, you know, through interactions in the non-physical. Um, the the last thing I wanted to talk about, and then we'll open it up to questions, is the idea of, uh, you know, how safe are you in the non-physical? The non-physical is, it's a, I think it's important to think of it as simply an extension of who we already are uh, in the physical. We are non-physical beings. It is, it is who we are. We have just forgotten that yeah. fact. And we have to reintegrate that. So it is a learning process. This is something that has been sort of flushed out of our awareness uh, in in the world that we live in today. And we have to reintegrate that. We have to b- begin the process of working with it. Um, you know, I found that the universe will guide you in the direction that you need to go. The information will come to you if you put the question out there. If you ask, I want to know about blank. Things will come to you. A book will fall from a shelf sometimes. You will naturally open a, a, a something that you pick up, a, another book or article or something, right to the page that has the information that you need. Um, signs and symbols can appear around you that in some way relate to a thought that forms in your head that is related to the answer that you need. Um and this is a whole process of, you know, beginning to understand about how the interactions of the non-physical are more than just being in the non-physical. You're doing it all the time. It's going on all the time. It's just that we've been trained not to pay attention to it. So uh, the the key thing here, I think, is is in in the idea of being safe in the non-physical. Um, when, whenever you project fear or you project um, uh, of frightfulness or uh, something that is of a non-beneficial nature to you, you're going to get more of that back in many ways. It's, it, it is a, um, is a real challenge because there's a mystery that you're exploring and some things that you're doing to try to understand the larger aspect of reality. And that, has, that entails in our understanding as physical beings a certain amount of uncertainty, a certain amount of anxiety or fear. But 
when we when we ask for the assistance of our guides, ask the assistance for the angels, the archangels, the non beneficial beings that are all out there waiting to work with us collectively or individually, um, you can get the help you need to deal with whatever it is that you come across. If it's your own fear or the fear of some other entity uh, or being that you that you encounter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentioned briefly, and we talked about some of the other things. Um, you, 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 you really are not going to get anything unless you ask for it. So you have to ask for it. One time, I, it's just as an example, I had a guide that came to me that brought um, these uh, beings with them, and they were very powerful. And I thought, well, these are very protective entities and they're now here and I found myself in a difficult situation. I said, well, why didn't any of these beings step in? And then I asked the guide and, and they told me, well, it's because you didn't ask. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I didn't know I was supposed to ask about this. It seemed pretty straightforward. And it's like, well, no, you're supposed to ask if you want the assistance. Uh, because when you get out there, you're kind of in some ways you're on your own. Uh, to learn because you're bringing it back to the physical. You're going from you're bridging from the physical to the non-physical. So, it's a learning process. Yeah, ask and be you will be given, right? Yeah. Uh, the other thing some people do is you know they they set the conditions that that they have a a highly energetic, powerful pad that they launch themselves from that they come back to at the end. Uh, they return to that place, and that place is cleansing and energizing and free of any uh, attachments to the non-physical. This is another process of visualization. We can ask Gaia to keep us clean and free and bring up this uh, golden or white healing light that uh, cleanses us of uh, any non-beneficial connections or energies. Um, it's almost <laughs> limitless, the things you can do. I mean, and just like, you know, you're going to plan a vacation or you're going to plan a trip to another city that you haven't been to, you know, it's, I think it's important that you do plan it, you know, and that you speak, you speak what you desire in the form of an intention, you know, and, and you may think, oh God, I can't think of everything. Well, just think of the things that are important to you, right? So, right. Right, um, uh, uh, peace and ease, protection, um, um, joy, um, illumination, um, you know, whatever those words are, it doesn't have to be, you know, like a big prayer or a declaration. It can be really simple, but the important part is to, to actually do that before you get started. Do you agree? I completely agree. I completely agree. The the sort of uh, startup conditions that you set uh, before you begin any kind of um, uh, excursion of your conscious self into the non-physical is really uh, important. And all of those things are wonderful. They're, they're something that everyone can do or they can do them individually. You can decide for yourself what is the way that, what is the thing that I need to do or that I can do that is going to give me that sense of uh, peace and well-being in the work that I'm going to be doing in the, in the non-physical. So absolutely, exactly. I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's so interesting because I'm recognizing that everything that we're talking about, you know, I mean, I, I try to live my life I've been practicing it since the 80s as cognizant that I am, you know, non-physical and I'm always, I'm always jockeying to stay in the higher energy of flow, to stay, you know, in balance with, with the non-physical. But I realized this is so much of what happens in the safe container of hypnotherapy. Like it just, it, everything that you were saying to me, I was like, wow, this is really what happens. And, you know, that I have had people go, you know, to other galaxies and have, you know, get in med beds and, you know, I mean, you know, have total, total upgrades and things like that, that happen during their hypnotherapy. So it's so interesting because I didn't really realize that that's what was happening. 
Absolutely. You know, those are those exact sort of things is things that you can do individually or you can you can have someone work with you as a facilitator to help make that happen. Hypnotherapy is, you know, a way to access the the non physical, at least in, in my experience it has been. When I hear people talking about the experiences uh, that they have through hypnotherapy, and the work of Dolores Cannon is um, uh, a, a big thing that I've explored a great deal. Some of the yeah. content that she presents is absolutely fascinating. If you have not explored Dolores Cannon's uh, works, that's uh, a resource uh, where it documents her uh, ex experiences with people doing hypnotherapy type work using her very specific techniques to to accomplish that. Um, I see. Uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. That I see amazing. now we got about three, two and a half minutes left of the show. Okay. So, um, first of all, we are getting into areas here that is so interesting that uh, we got to do another show, Dan, very soon. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I can do is uh, have a discussion about some of the experiences that I've had in the yeah. non-physical and talk a little bit about that and give you the range of possibilities. I was, just lastly, I was very fortunate to have a woman that I spent about 10 years with learning uh, how this uh, this process works and how to do this work and working yeah. with her. And uh, there are a lot of ups and downs, I can tell you, oh, um, yeah. from that experience, but I've come out of it with... Um, you know, a, a, a much more secure feeling about uh, the nature of the non-physical. So it does take time. Patience with yourself. Yep, absolutely. And then there is a book brewing inside of you that needs to get out. Yes. You got to do that. And uh, also, uh, let us know also uh, how we, uh, you know, people can get a hold of you. Because I know you, you're you going to hear from somebody here that wants to know a little more. Or maybe they have experiences of their own they do not understand. So uh, maybe you could mention where they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. You can access me through my website at dlbrock, that's D-L-B-R-O-C-K dot com, D-L-Brock dot com, and my email is dan, D-A-N, at D-L-Brock dot com. Contact me there, please. Okay, and we are down to the end of the show, so we will be back next week and very soon again with Dan. So um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys being. so much. We love you guys. You've been listening to Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. Hosted by Nori Love and Augie Nost. Every Tuesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. The balance of power is shifting. Shifting to a new paradigm. Will you be ready? For more information on Broadcast Team Alpha as well as the hosts, Nori Love and Agi Nost, please visit their website at broadcastteamalpha.com. Until next week, remember to keep those minds open while always exploring the endless quantum possibilities. Broadcast Team Alpha, over and out. This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. 